One of the things that I talk about in my new book, The Death by Bungee Crossbow Method, Strategies for Crossbow Hunting Success, is that when you change one thing on a crossbow, such as a scope, you change a lot of other things down the road. It has a ripple effect. Boy, was that true this summer. In yesterday's video, I talked about how I struggled this summer with accuracy here on Bungie the Third. I was having a little bit of trouble after I put this scope on. All of a sudden, you know, things are changing. I had a cheek rest issue and had all kinds of different things that we went through this summer to try and get this crossbow sighted in. Hopefully, this series of videos, seeing what I did to correct the problems here with Bungie the Third, hopefully what I went through, we can all learn something from it and maybe it'll help you down the road as well. So let's talk about the various issues that I had with accuracy this summer. Let's talk about the solutions, what I did to correct those, to make sure they weren't the ultimate problem that was causing all of the wandering shots with Bungie the third. Well, let's talk about the big one first, right? Let's talk about canting. <laughs> no crossbow in the world demonstrates canting better than the OB, the one and only. Bungie. This crossbow with its 36 inch wide limbs, and I'm exaggerating them by putting them up front and center in the video, it's not loaded. Don't worry. See, you can see, right? This crossbow right now, that's a good level shot, but, and at 20 yards, it's great. At 60 yards, it's great. But if I can't a little bit, canting is when you tilt the crossbow in one direction or another, but if you're not level, all of a sudden at 60 yards or any distance really beyond your zero line on this crossbow, it's 20 yards. If yours is 40, then at 50, 60, and 70, the farther out you go, the more this makes a difference. The reason for that is our reticles are straight up and down. The minute you go out here, now your reticle is over here, right? My 60 yard reticle is over here. And when I take that shot, I think the arrow is going over here, but gravity only works up and down. It works straight up and down, perfectly straight up and down. So I take that shot, the arrow is going to drop straight. So instead of shooting over here, I'm shooting over here. The other thing is if you're shooting a more modern crossbow that zeroes in at 40 or even 50 yards, every reticle above that is subject to canting. So shooting a level crossbow becomes really, really important. Some scopes have a built in level. Some crossbows come with a built-in level. Bungie and I historically have not had that issue because we keep our shots at 20 yards. Canting on an older, slower crossbow like this too can make a little bit of a difference, more of a difference, I think, than on a faster crossbow because your reticles will appear farther apart. The purpose of that, of course, is with a slower crossbow, I have to raise the barrel a little bit higher in order to make that shot accurately. On a more modern crossbow, you probably don't have that issue as much. It's not as noticeable because those reticles are going to be closer together in appearance and you're, you don't have to raise the barrel of the crossbow as much. When sighting this crossbow in, I do use a level. I put a level right on the rail, make sure that it's sitting level in the death grip field pod that I have, right? That bog death grip. I want it sitting level in that tripod. That has a built-in level as well. This scope, the Burris Oracle X, actually has a built-in level also. And it's told me a couple of times, hey, Rich, you're canting the crossbow a little bit. It's a little easier to cant a crossbow like this that's narrower because those limbs don't stick out as far. I still like the fact this is about 22 inches, I think, on the outside of the cam, something like that, 21 inches. And I do get in my peripheral vision a little bit of a notice if I'm canting. I can kind of tell that. So in the field, it'll work out well. The built-in level of this scope, it's pretty good, but I can tell you uh, it's not as picky as I am. <laughs> Shooting rest. That's the next thing they want to talk about when we talk about making sure we're consistently accurate in the backyard, in the 60 yard backyard. In my case, the minute you reach out 60 yards, these little differences really started to show themselves. I got to tell you, I went through everything trying to find a way to mount Bungie the third, the Scorpid Deathstalker on the bog death grip field pod. I love that tripod has the built in level. It grips Bungie perfectly. It grips Bungie Jr. perfectly. With Bungie, I've got this nice square foregrip, right? It's like a two by four. You drop that in that field pod, crank that down. It's not going anywhere. Even at 60 yards, I look through here and it's just a matter of pulling the trigger. The reticles don't move. 
With this crossbow, Scorpid's gone out of their way to make it contoured and comfortable and nice and delicate for your delicate little hands or I don't know, whatever. But I do appreciate it. It is a nice design. It is comfortable. It does shoot well, blah, blah, blah. It's not very good for a tripod. And here is a complaint that I have about this crossbow. This is the Deathstalker 420, kind of their flagship for a long time, right? It's got a tripod mount right here, right? Right here, tripod mount. They don't sell a tripod bracket. For this model. I bought their tripod bracket off their website. It doesn't fit. The holes don't line up. I thought it was me. I just assumed it was me. But I will tell you that returning it was not a problem and my hats goes off to um, Scorpid. I'll give them credit where credit is due. Kind of looked funny walking into the hardware store carrying this, but I bought the screws and they were real nice. Helped me out buy the screws that would fit in there. I tried to make a wooden block that would work, right? A wooden block that would fit in there so I could put that wooden block in the tripod. I tried screws with inserts like somebody had used on a forum that did not work. I even tried bought a couple of rubber hoses, cut those down, put them on the bog death grip as well. All that did was decrease the width of the bog death grip. It did not grip this, not in a manner that was satisfactory to me, not like it does with bungee. It doesn't just sit in there and not move. It still wiggled all over the place. So it really wasn't a fix. What I ended up doing was just using the Caldwell field pod that I've used in the yard satisfactorily, but I had to build a platform in order to raise that field pod up so I could shoot over the balcony. I put it together out of scraps and it works. It works. In the end, really the shooting rest did not correct the problems that I was having with Bungie the third. So it wasn't shooting rests that were the problem. In fact, I can tell you, historically, back in the day, I just sighted in bungee off of sawhorses and I was good out to 30, right? I killed deer that way my first few seasons. Genevieve still prefers the ease of shooting off the, the balcony, just resting the crossbow on the balcony and sighting in off of that. She's only shooting out to 30 yards. She doesn't care about any of this stuff. That contoured handle on Bungie the third doesn't like to sit on that railing. It rocks all over the place. But again, Bungie, bungee the third, why aren't you accurate out to 60? Come on. The next thing we had to look at with Bungie the third here to try and diagnose why it wasn't shooting accurately is the scope itself. Couple things, right? You gotta understand the scope. And it's one reason why I don't really like having two different scopes. I really like having one scope. So every crossbow that I pick up has the same view, right? Switching from one scope to another is kind of a problem for me, but we're gonna make it work. I bought the scope, put a lot of money into this thing, gonna make it work, right? Understanding how to do this, I fully understand how to operate the scope. But I can tell you, I still, when truing it, when going through that digital truing process, I still screw that up from time to time and forget to save my changes. I make the changes, happy, back out of it without saving. Make sure you're saving it, right? The other thing I'll tell you about this scope, and maybe other scopes are affected by this as well. I've talked to other people who have these scopes. For some of them, the windage adjustment turns pretty hard. For others, it does not. For me, it turns kind of hard, right? And the other thing I'll tell you about it, this crossbow sits in the trophy room here so I can take it out on the balcony when I'm ready to shoot, but it just stays inside in the air conditioning. And then when I go out in the outdoors where it's 90 degrees, the problem with that is you're out there shooting this in the heat and the grease inside this right the cylinder is still at air conditioned level like it's at 70 degrees or something you're out there at 90 degrees and i think that actually was affecting it so it didn't turn as quickly like i'd make an adjustment here and i wouldn't notice that adjustment until two or three shots later i really think that's a thing i could be completely wrong but it just underscores the fact that before we take our crossbows from our nice air conditioned home out into the backyard where it's nice and hot, set it in the shade to bring it up to temperature first, let it acclimate. It's really no different than in the winter. I keep it in the house where it's kind of warm. And then I go hunting 20 degree weather. I take that crossbow and I leave it in the garage, right? To let it cool down for a few hours before I put it in the truck and go hunting. So let your crossbow acclimate. Unfortunately, that did not fix Bungie the Third's problems either. Now, what about the trigger, right? This is Genevieve's crossbow, Bungie Jr. 
Really nice crossbow. Really, she loves this thing. She's just having the greatest time, and it holds its accuracy. She, she has no interest in shooting out past, you know, 30 yards, so it really doesn't matter. She's got, she got the Charger EXT crank on here. The trigger, now, I'm some people will tell you they prefer a certain style of trigger. I totally get that. I've tried a few crossbows where I didn't like the trigger, right? But of the three crossbows we have in the house here, Bungie 1, 2, and 3, so to speak, I like the triggers in all three of those. They seem very consistent, very much the same. So I'm comfortable with them, familiar with them, and that's very important. When I talk about the trigger and how it affects accuracy, I'm not talking so much about the style of the trigger, although you may prefer one style of trigger to another. With that, I'm really what I'm really referring to is how you pull the trigger, how I pull the trigger. And I was wondering, is that causing me to have shots wander? It certainly can. If you put your finger in too far and pull the trigger, you might be pulling a crossbow a little bit to the right. If you don't put your finger in far enough and you pull the trigger, you might be pushing the crossbow a little bit to the left. It can affect your windage on your shots to make sure that you don't have that problem. Really what we're doing is you're pulling the trigger with your fingerprint. Think of it that way. If you pull straight back, you're going to get more consistent shots. Very important to do it the same way every time, but be thinking about that. For me, on the crossbows that I use, my fingers seems to fall exactly where I want it. It's a little bit I can reach through on this one because this is a smaller crossbow. But on the two crossbows with, that I use regularly, Bungie and Bungie the third, they both seem to have the trigger put right in the right spot. So that was not my issue. Even the fastest of crossbows can have a problem with wind at longer distances. The wind is probably the same out to 20 yards. The arrow's not in the air so long, so the wind doesn't have as much time to affect the arrow's path at 20 yards. You reach out to longer distances, and all of a sudden, you might have a breeze down where the target is that you can't feel, you can't sense where you're shooting from. And to sort of figure that out, I went and bought a little cheapo wind sock off of Amazon, hung that in the 60 yard backyard, and then I can watch when the wind is blowing. And I can take that into account. And when that sock is more stable and hanging straight down, that's when it's a good time to take a shot. If that sock is blowing real good one way or the other, it doesn't make any difference. But if that sock is moving, then I am not going to take a shot. I'll just wait until it calms down. Take a shot when it's calm. By doing that, I could rule out wind as one of my problems. That's not what was causing the wandering shots on Bungie the third. A few other things I kind of wrote down as notes that we can look at. They weren't problems. I kind of ruled them out. Didn't really spend a lot of time on them. But a few things that could be issues that could be causing those wandering shots. Look out for limb issues, right? As your serving starting to be a little bit closer on one side than the other, the brace height is starting to shift a little bit. If you see that, you might be having a limb problem. Trust me, we know, right? We went through that last year. So maybe it's a limb problem. I ruled that out. Everything is sitting pretty and it's right where it's supposed to be, blah, blah, blah. Cocking it improperly. If you're pulling the, the crank, the cocking rope to one side or the other, that was traditionally a problem. I don't feel at all that that was an issue for me because I cock it the same way every time. In fact, I have a, a sled cocker on Bungie the third, which is pretty going to cock it pretty consistently every time. Most of you out there probably, including my daughter Genevieve, are using some kind of crank. And hopefully, to keep those hooks tight to the rail, whatever that crank requires, hopefully that crank is going to cock it the same way every time. Consistency is the key. If you cock it the same way every time, it's going to shoot more consistently. So I could rule that out here. Which eye do you shoot with? I've been shooting with my right eye forever, so I even if it was the wrong way to do it for me, I'm not going to change. It's, it's going to have to work. But you can actually have an eye issue. The difference is if you open both of your eyes and cover up that item, right? I'm covering up the camera lens. But if I open my right eye, it stays directly on the camera. If I close my right eye, my thumb has moved off to the left. That tells me my right eye and my brain cooperate a little bit better than my left eye. So I'm using the correct eye. So that wasn't an issue for me, just something I'm throwing out there. You may want to try a little test like that yourself to see if you're shooting with the correct eye. It's going to be a little easier to shoot with the correct eye. What about arrows? Arrows, right? That's everything for accuracy. That can make or break your accuracy. A lot of the testing I was doing with, was with the same arrow over and over. And then I'd switch to a different arrow and shoot that one over and over. And I document all of my 
different shots. And there wasn't any consistency from one arrow to another. There wasn't any consistency with the same arrow. I couldn't even say that that same arrow was shooting perfectly every time. So I'm ruling out the arrow as I'm doing that. The second question is the knock, right? When we talk about arrows, the knock that attaches to the string, and some friends of Bungie have pointed this out, I'm using Burt Coyote Luminox, Parker Luminox on the Deathstalker arrows. These really aren't the best. They aren't what comes with the arrow. They really aren't the best for the Scorpid Deathstalker. They are a capture style knock, but they don't grip the string the way the stock knock does or the way the recommended fire, fire knock knocks do. But I don't want to use those, right? I want a lighted knock and I really don't care for the fire knocks. I did them last year, played around with those, but I haven't had the greatest of experiences with those. That's just me. I'm not telling you what to use or not use. And I'm certainly not telling you to deviate from what the manufacturer recommends and use a Luminock on your Deathstalker. But I can tell you their website and literature does suggest that it's acceptable to use it. Uh, remember we talked to Dave Wilkins at Wyvern Creations. Uh, the reality is as long as it's all the way against the string, there's no problem. You're not, you have not if you have a, a knock here and a string here and, you, and, and there's a gap, it's just going to slam and it breaks it. But if it's against it, it just pushes it along. You don't have any real no failures. I have shot the Parker style Luminox out of those and those Parker arrows. Fine. You think I'm fine. Okay. I hate to be hitting you up for, you're like my doctor. I'm hitting you up at a, at a cocktail the, party for three one of the few, Yeah. You really, you have to have an encapsulated knock to work with a Scorpid to keep their warranty in place. The capture Luminox, which are the Parker Knox will work fine. It's one of the few that they approve of. Most of the time they'll use a fire knock. Uh, if you, for example, the arrows you pulled out of your package were had the clear knocks on them, yep. those were actually black Eagle capture knocks. So there, and, you know, and there's a variety the Versa knock is a new one that came out. That works really well. Last year I was shooting these things and had great success with them. When I switched from the fire knock to these Luminox I had great luck, right? So why aren't they working now? So it kind of says I can rule out the knock as the problem. Again, shooting field points, so it's not that end of the arrow either that is causing these wandering shots. Is it the spine of the arrow that was causing the problems? Is the cock vein not lined up with the spine of the arrow? So when I pull the trigger, the spine's off to the side and wants to throw the arrow off to the side or something like that, causing the shots to wander. It's easy to find out if that's the problem. You just rotate the arrow, turn the knock, and make sure you turn the knock properly, line it upright, but shoot the arrow using a different vein. Did that, want, you know, rotated the arrows, knock tuned them or whatever. Didn't seem to make much difference in terms of consistent accuracy. I even tried helicals on this, refletched one of them with helical veins to see if that would shore up my accuracy to sort of hone in that accuracy at longer distances. I've got other videos coming on that this week. Alas, it was not the arrows that were the problem. You also want to make sure that you're calmed down before you go shooting again. Rushing a shot in the backyard will not give you good results, just like rushing a shot in the woods will not help you get good results. So make sure that you are settling down. I can tell you, I was so worked up at times. I'd put the crossbow in a rest, get in there and start taking a shot and looking and couldn't figure out why the crossbow was doing this. It was the pulse in my neck pushing against this pad and actually moving the crossbow. Can you believe that? So settle down before you start taking shots and get your breathing under control. I did all these things. I did all this stuff in the 60 yard backyard. Bungie the third was still suffering with wandering shots, still struggling to get consistent accuracy from 40 to 60 yards. I can tell you after all of this ruling out of these and ruling out of those after all of that, all these trials, right? All these tests, which I can't stand doing. Don't like doing this stuff. I prefer to, you know, hunt with a crossbow, not tinker with it. But after all of this, I finally figured out what it was, and I have solved Bungie the Third's ills. That's tomorrow's video. Until tomorrow, watch these other videos from Death by Bungie. And all hail Bungie. Another tip about accuracy, right? 
if you're going to shoot at a boar that is 50 yards away from the house, use the 50-yard reticle, not the 55. When you're shooting a slower crossbow with heavier arrows, you end up going clean over that guy's back, and he escapes, lives to be hunted another day. But here's another thing. You want to figure out how you're shooting your crossbow so you can see where those arrows hit at great distances. We have Luminox there, but check out this dude. I could see it from clear up there, halfway down the lawn. I could see that lit on this bright sunny day. So, I'll hail the Luminox. 